Nitro Kid and I here today. I've had a lot of people asking me where I've got this radiator from. Um, first of all, let me go ahead and state it is not a 2G Eclipse turbo radiator. Um, that's why a lot of y'all, I know a lot of people feel like, man, I've looked all over the internet. I can't find a 420A radiator no more, aluminum. And the reason is because this is not one of them. This is a 1G turbo radiator. Uh, it'll fit the all-wheel drive and the front-wheel drive first-gen turbo models. Um, the way that I got this to mount in here was uh, actually not that bad. Um, we haven't ran a down pipe with it yet, which may show some concern, and I'll show you why in a second. Let me go ahead and give you a little preview of how to install this. As you can see, I only have one radiator mount holding this radiator on, and the reason is on the bottom, it has these same little pegs, and they sit into the radiator uh, supports at the bottom, the radiator mounts at the bottom. I've cut the peg on this side off of the bottom, so the peg on that side is the only thing holding it in, and it sits perfectly. The, the subframe right here has like a little dip in it, so the radiator sits perfectly in there, if you can see, and uh, that's what keeps it in there real sturdy. As you can see, it doesn't want to move, and uh, what I've had to do is I've put a neon water inlet pipe on it. It's a Dodge Neon. Um, that's blocked off for heat. That little nipple you can see there. As you can see that right there is blocked off for heat. I do not have heating in this car no more. I actually have none of the stuff under the dash. I don't have the fan, blower, motor, none of that stuff. It's all gone. And um, what you do is once you cut that one off, sit it in, bolt it up. I have a neon radiator hose, top and bottom. Uh, when you install the neon water inlet, the uh, the only problem that I ran into is I had to bend this dipstick just a little bit because the dipstick bolts to the block and so does that inlet. I had to bend the dipstick just a little bit to line up with the hole right there. Um, and I, it's bolted on the bottom as you can see. And it's not really bolted on the top, but I had to line it up with that so the pressure of it would hold it, hold the dipstick in there real firm. I don't really see the dipstick getting loose, but just in case, because for some reason the upper bolt on that will not go in. And I know it's identical to the neon block, but I had a lot of time with it, but it's still in there real securely, as I'll show you. I, mean, I can wiggle it, it's not moving. Um, the only problem I'll say is when you do this, I got that from the junkyard for five bucks, and the only problem is the actual o ring it plugs into the water pump house. Um, it looked a little worn out, and I uh, put a little oil on it, let it, you know, lubed it up real good. So I, when I make sure it didn't sl uh, damage it, when I slid it in there, and uh, so far so good. And I got a couple eBay Slim fans on it that actually work really good. Uh, they're supposed to flow 3,000 CFMs a piece. I very seriously doubt they do that. Um, but in the whole setup with the fans and the radiator, I got about 160 bucks. So, um, and the reason I did that, I mean, anybody that's got a 428 out there knows we have overheating problems. Uh, almost every 428 does. There's a couple of you guys out there that haven't ran into an issue with it, and y'all are the lucky few. Y'all, I'm not going to say that you will eventually run into it, but more than likely you will. Um, this car has always had overheating problems, um, and it wasn't sitting in traffic or nothing like that. You get out, you stomp it, the heat gauge would just rise. I mean, it'd go crazy anytime you were on it real heavy. Uh, especially if you were doing like a fourth gear pull or fifth gear pull where it takes a little bit to climb in the RPMs, it would the heat gauge would start rising along with it. So uh, that was a problem that I have with this one, and this is an attempt to... Uh, hopefully cure that problem, especially with a turbocharger on it. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm hoping that works. If not, I do have a couple other little tricks up my sleeve, which I will show y'all later on. And just a little bit of an update, we do have a flange for the downpipe. Uh, I'm going to go pick up a welder later this week. Uh, I sold mine to a buddy of mine. I'm going to go borrow it. Um, actually, this is an eBay um, flange. You can see it's stuck on there pretty good. I mean, it doesn't want to... It's not really... Doesn't really want to. There we go. Funny. Uh, yeah, it's not really. Doesn't really fit in there real well. It's got a lot of surface rust on it already. Um, but anyway, like I said, that's, I've had tons of people ask me where I got this radiator from. I know Fluidine made uh, 2G non-turbo radiators and a couple other ones, and um, a lot of them are discontinued. You might find, if you're very lucky, some random-ass company that makes them. I know OBX doesn't make them. Uh, Mishimoto, as far as I know, don't make them. So, um, let's say the, the trick is to run a 1G turbo, and there may be other ways to bolt this thing up in the car, but that's how I did it with a neon water inlet. Um, I'm very happy with the way it went. The install probably took, uh, I can't really actually tell you how long it took, because uh, I actually put the neon water inlet on the engine while it was sitting on the engine stand. Uh, so, 
Well, anyway, it's been Nitro Kid 98. Hopefully, this will solve some of y'all's cooler problems. Go on eBay, buy a 1G turbo radiator. Radiator. If you have any problems bolting this thing up, uh, just hit me up on YouTube, and um, I'll walk you through it. So.